Living Word. I am Stacy Larson. I am the executive pastor here, and I get to talk to you today about one of my favorite spiritual disciplines, and that is giving. Uh, I think some of you probably think maybe giving is a little scary, or maybe you think it's outdated and not something that we do anymore. I promise you it is neither of those things. It is both very relevant and uh, not scary. In fact, it can bring great, jo great joy. So I would like to reference the scripture, actually giving, giving is talked about throughout the scriptures, uh, but I would like to reference one in particular. This is Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We are going to look at chapter 9, starting in verse 6, and here's what it says. The point is this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. So the first thing I want you to know about giving is that it is a discipline or an exercise, discipline is like exercise, of the heart. It's not about your budget. It's not about line items. It's not about how to make it fit with your grocery bills and everything else. It is about your heart. And uh, God always is going after our heart in everything that he does. So number one, we want to think of our hearts. And then on top of that, we want to think about the posture of our heart. Do we have a posture of abundance or do we have a posture of scarcity? We actually get to choose how we look at things and how we look at giving. And God in this scripture is saying, look at your heart and choose that posture. And hopefully you'll choose a posture of abundance. I think about um, a, the Christmas story that we all have seen when we were kids, the story of the Grinch that stole Christmas. And when he, if you, hopefully I'm not ruining it for anybody, but at some point he decides to give all that he's taken and he decides to give it back. And in the story it says his heart grew three sizes that day through that act of giving. So when I think about giving in the heart, I always can imagine the Grinch and his heart going like, whoop, 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 growing, growing, expanding. It's a great thing. Let's continue on in the scripture. Verse 10. He who, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. So with this posture of abundance, essentially, we are trusting God with, uh, to supply our needs. And in addition to him supplying our needs, we get to partner with him as we trust him to supply our needs, to give us what we need. When we give, we're trusting him and partnering with him, and we help to supply the need of others. And so it's this kind of ongoing progression of we trust him in a heart posture of abundance. We give. When we do that, that moves forward, which produces more giving, which produces more giving, and it goes on and on and on and on. This is how God always intended it, giving upon giving upon giving, a heart posture of abundance that just keeps flowing through the world. Think about when you're in the Starbucks drive through right, and you pull up, and you go to get, pay for your coffee, and they're like, hey, uh, the person behind you already got that. And you're like, oh, that's so awesome. I'm going to pay for the, or, sorry, the person in front of you already got that. And you're like, I'm going to pay for the person behind me, and I've been in there where the Starbucks Starbucks people are like, we're keeping it going. It's so great. Just that ongoing process of giving is really God's plan. It's how it was designed to be in this world. So we get to partner with him in that. As we finish in verse 12, it says, for the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, but it is also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution from them and for all others. Did you know, um, you may not know this, that our church functions solely based on your tithes and offerings, from the staff to missions to keeping the lights on to recording this video. All of that happens because of your generosity and your giving, your tithes and offerings. There's no bigger, greater organization that sends money to us or pays for anything. In fact, it's quite the opposite. We send money the other way to the greater Foursquare Church, and out of that abundance, they bless the world across in that great organization as we send money out. So uh, just as this, Paul talks about this in his scripture, 
That was kind of the plan all along, that out of our abundance, out of our heart posture, we fund the local church, we fund the body of Christ, we then go on and fund outside of that, and it goes on and on and on. Um, so you may be asking, what does this look like practically in my life? How do I, how do, I do this if I've, never, if I've never given before? I'm not sure about it, but I think I want to try. I do have some steps for you, step by step to make it easy. Number one, sit uh, with the Lord quietly. Ask him into your heart. That's the first step. This really is about an exercise of the heart. So ask him in. Welcome into your heart. And then think about abundance. Think abundance. Take that posture, not of scarcity, but of abundance. And I would say, as you're thinking about partnering with him, think about not, well, how much can I spare, but how much can I give? I mean, dream big. How much could I do? How much can I trust out of this heart of abundance to do your great work, Lord? But then there's another step, and that's the actual giving of the money. <laughs> and maybe you've never done that before. And if you're not, my only advice to you is just dive right in. There's no, you know, it's like ripping a Band-Aid off. You just have to try it. But here's the thing. Start small. Come in. Come to church with a dollar in your pocket. Let that dollar be purposeful. Plan for it. Think about it. Pray about it. Speak, seek God with that abundant heart posture. Put that dollar in your pocket. And every week, as you put the dollar in the offering, think about, okay, Lord, I'm opening my heart. I'm thinking of a posture and abundance. How is this dollar going to move forward? And I think you'll be surprised at how he responds. And then just start to increase a little bit as you can, as your heart increases, just like the Grinch, as your heart grows, right? Maybe you move to $5. Maybe you move to 10 Maybe you move to 20 100 1000 There's no end to how big we can think in the abundance of God in our hearts. We have scriptures about the, the widow who gave uh, a widow's mite, but it was everything she had. So we all have something to give, right? We have to start somewhere. So start somewhere. I would say try it. Uh, it's a regular practice, so, so try to do it every week. When you do jump in, start with that dollar. Do it every week, just like working out, building muscles, running on a treadmill, any of those things. Uh, the consistency is the key, for sure. If you still have questions or you want to talk about this more, please come and see us. Come talk to me. Come sit with us. Share your views, your thoughts, your fears, your excitement. We would love to sit with you and hear how the Lord is moving in your life. All right. We thank you so much. And I just encourage you to step out. Remember those steps. Open your heart. Think abundance and dive right in. All right. God bless.